My mother was nearly 90 years old when I noticed a change in her speech during our daily phone calls. When we got her to the hospital, the x-ray or CAT scan study of her brain implied a blood clot had formed within one of the brain arteries during the night. She was having a stroke of bad luck. They say most elderly people eventually die of a blood clot, either to the brain, the heart, the kidneys, the legs, or somewhere. This happens because as we age, we develop an overclotting disorder, or our blood vessels close off due to scarring. By definition, a stroke is a vascular problem caused when the blood flow to a part of the brain is blocked. In 80% of cases, it's a blood clot that originates within the brain arteries or starts either in a carotid artery or a chamber within the heart and is carried by blood flow to the brain. If started within three hours of the event, clot busters can reverse much of the brain injury from this kind of stroke. However, in 20% of the cases, brain tissue destruction is due to bleeding, making clot busters not helpful and even harmful. Recently, the World Health Organization stated that three quarters of all vascular problems are connected to poor lifestyle choices, such as physical inactivity, use of tobacco, and unhealthy dietary habit. The closest we get to a fountain of youth comes from living a healthy lifestyle, and aside from controlling high blood pressure, usually not from medicines. There are no shortcuts, and cholesterol meds are only minimally helpful. In recent years, we've learned how blood clots and strokes can result from two medical conditions that require special treatment an irregular heart rhythm condition called atrial fibrillation or fibrillation may result in blood clots forming within the heart, bringing a higher risk for stroke. Atrial fib requires long-term anticoagulation by warfarin or a similar drug. The second condition is moderate to severe sleep apnea, which often causes both atrial fib and an increased risk for clotting. Sleep apnea requires nightly use of a continuous positive airway pressure or CPAP mask and machine. Many people struggle using CPAP, but unfortunately no good alternative exists. Generally throat surgery or jaw thrust devices don't effectively treat moderate to severe sleep apnea. Although wearing CPAP can pose a challenge, People with sleep apnea should endeavor to make that mass device work. Understanding these issues just might prevent a stroke of bad luck.